Good morning class, welcome to Game Dev Academy. I'm Professor Whittington and in this class we will be creating a low poly treasure chest in Maya as well as doing a bit of UV mapping and some simple texturing. Make sure you sign the register by leaving a comment below the video and if you'd all like to take your seats we will begin. Dave, Dave that means you. Dave sit down. Yes Dave sit down we want to start. <sighs> okay now that Dave's ready off we go. Okay, so let's make a start, and I want to start with the treasure chest. And I want to keep the polygon count for that round about 250 triangles in total. So we'll see how we get on with that. So here we go. I'm going to start with a cube. Okay, we'll just give that a, a name. Let's go to the channel box, and we'll call it chest. Good thinking. Okay, and then we will just kind of freestyle this a little bit. So let's sort of get the general chest shape that we want. Yeah, that's pretty nice. And then we want to get kind of a, a boxy style curved top to this. So I'm going to get the top face. I'll hit Control and E to extrude. And I'm just going to pull that up, not too high, to about there, I think. So that gives us a good start. And then into edge mode, I'm going to select these two edges. And to get a bit of a curve to the top, I'm going to bevel them. So let's click on this little chap up here. He's bevel. Ooh, very nice. And let's have a look. So I'm just going to mess with a fraction to see where I like it. Not there. Um, yeah, that's pretty nice. So I've gone for a fraction of about 0 0.7. That'll do. But this gives us a problem that needs to be solved. So this face here now has more than four sides, which 3D applications hate. It's what's called an n-gon. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six sides. So we need to split this in some way to make sure it's only got four-sided shapes. And we'll do that with our multi-cut tool, this little chap up here. And I'll do that by just connecting this point here to this point there. And then when I'm done, I'll press enter and that just fills it, and you can see I've got an edge flow going around. I'll just do the same on the other side. Pop, and pop, here we go. Beautiful. So now you can see we've got a four-sided here, uh, that's, that's a quad, and we've got a quad underneath. Happy day, so that's that bit done. Next up, we need to get um, these like bands that come off, the metal-looking bands. So, in order to do that, I'm going to use my mesh tools and I'm going to do the insert edge loop tool but I'm going to go to the tool settings to make sure that I'm on multiple edge loops and that I have it set to two and I'm doing that to make sure that I get the same distance on the edges you'll see what I mean so I'll put two edges in and you can see that they are an equal distance and whilst I've still got them selected I'm going to switch to my move tool and just pull them to the side like that to give me a nice sort of band around each side so that'll do it on this side. I also want a band around the inside here. And the way I will do that is I'll go into face mode. Select all the faces on one side and all the faces on another. And then I will extrude those. And I'm going to put an offset on there. And I'm just going to bring it in so that it looks about the same thickness here and here. So that matches. And make sure that's happening on both sides, which it is. Okay, so far so good, and at the moment I'm around about 92 triangles, so not too much damage done. And the last thing I want is a band that kind of goes around, sort of where it would open and close. So to do that I'm going to use my multi-cut tool, hold control, which will allow me to put in an edge loop, like so. And I want a similar sort of width on the band, so I'm going to put it about there. Okay, so now I'm set up ready to do some extrusion. So I'm going to go into face mode and I need to select some faces. So I'm going to need all of that the faces on that ring there. I'll do the same on this side. So what I'm doing to get this selection is I click on one face and then holding shift I double click on the one next to it and Maya will often just figure out what you want to do next. And I shall try the same with this one. Click and click. Yep. And click and click or double click. So you can see now I've got all that selected. I don't want the ones on the bottom because I want to keep that flat. And I 
do want the ones that go around like this. Okay, but as I'm looking at this, I can see that I've got a problem. I want these bands to be flat, which is here, but this edge here, because of the way I've extruded to get this one here, has got a little bit of a wobble to it, which I don't want. So before moving on with this selection, I need to sort that out. So I'm just going to discard that selection of faces. I'm going to go into edge mode. I'll double click on that edge loop, and that'll get the whole thing. And what I'll do is scale it on the Y axis, which will just flatten it out much better. Okay, so now I need to get that selection again. So let's go into face mode. So I need that one. Oh, no. That one there. That one there. That one there. And that one there. Not on the bottom, thank you. And then we will add that one, that one, that one, and that one. Okay, so that's all the bands selected. What I need to do now is give those a little depth. So I'm going to hit Control and E to get an extrusion. And I'm just going to bring the thickness up to get a little bit of definition on those. And I like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. So now I've got the basic chest shape. Um, one thing I'm going to do, so I don't know how well you'll be able to see this on the recording. But as I'm zooming in and out, I'm getting like ugly edges here, which I don't like. Now I'm just going to try and get rid of those a little bit by going to view, uh, select camera, which will select the camera I've got. I'm going to go into my attribute editor and then the near clip plane. I'm just going to up that to a bigger number like five. And then as I zoom in and out, they kind of disappear, those horrible black bits, which is a nifty little trick. Okay, so this is our chest. That's good so far. What I'll need next is a lock. So I'm going to create that out of another cube. So let's get a new cube. And we will bring it this way. Let's scale it up so I can see what I'm working with. And I'm going to rename it to lock. And then I'm going to do some work with it. So on this one, to get the shape I want, I'm going to need a center line on it. So I'll do that first of all. So subdivisions width, I'm just going to change that to two to give me a center line. And then I'm just going to bring the depth down a bit. Okay, that'll do so far. Now what I want is to get a bit of definition around the bottom. So we'll go into edge mode and click here and click here. Very nice. And I'm going to bevel those. Let's just get the grid off for a minute. It's in the way. Okay, so let's bevel them. And again, I'll mess with a fraction until I get something I like. Yep, that's pretty cool. And I've created an end gone. So I'm going to fix that into my multi-cut tool. And let's start here. And we'll go here. Press enter. There we go. No end gones there. And we'll just fix around the back. I'm probably going to delete the faces around the back. But in case I don't, I'll fix them now. Okay. So that's pretty nice. Let's just hide that. I don't need that right now. Okay, so now I need to create a kind of a, a lock face here. So we'll give that a go. Let's go into face mode. One, two, three, four. I'm going to extrude those in. And put an offset on it. And hopefully these vertices here, I'll have enough of them to create a, a basic sort of key shape. So let's get hold of this vertex and this vertex. And I'm going to first of all scale them in and then move them down. And that's going to create the sort of top of my lock. Next up, I'm going to select these three vertices. I'm just going to use my scale tool to straighten them off. And then I'm going to move up and in like that. And that's hopefully going to create the bottom of the lock shape, which looks pretty nice. And then I'm going to move this one up here and just flare those vertices out. And that's sort of where the key is going to go. So now I'm going to select those faces and just sort of scale that up a little bit so it looks more of a key size. Okay, so that'll do for that. And then I'm going to extrude that in. So control E and push it back, push it back, you know, plenty far so that it's 
got a nice bit of depth to it. And at this point, I am going to delete the faces off the back. So one, two, three, four, get rid of those. Ooh, see you later. Okay, so that's pretty much the, the lock done. So what I want to do now is make that part of the, the chest. So I'm just going to move it into place, really. So let's do that. And the first thing I'll do is make it so that my pivot point is in line with the, the back of the lock. So that'll make it easy to snap this to the chest. So I'm going to hold D, which will put me into pivot point mode. And then I'm going to hold V as well, which will snap it to a vertex. And then just on this axis, so I move it back, I'll click and I'll tell it to snap to that vertex there. And that means that now if we go around the side, you can see the pivot is just perfectly aligned with the back of that. So now, I know that I've got a vertex just there that will line this up perfectly with the edge of there. So I'm going to hold V on my keyboard, click on here, and I'm just going to put my mouse on that vertex there. And that's perfect. That's exactly where I wanted it. And now it's just a case of scaling it in a little bit, making sure it looks right, and then putting it in place, which is going to be a little bit tricky. So I'm just going to move my pivot point one more time. So I'm going to D and V. I'm going to move it to the top of the shape. And now when I move it by holding V, I can snap it to that vertex there, which will perfectly line up with where I want it. I do want the lock to stick out a little bit, but I want it to be in line with that band. So I think let's just turn on ambient occlusion so we can see what we're looking at. So I think that looks pretty good. All there is left to do now is add some textures to it. So I aimed for 250 triangles. I'm at 260, so I can live with that. There might be one or two savings I can make. I'm fairly sure I could do something here to get rid of these faces because they're not doing anything. I could get rid of a couple, but it's low enough that I can work with it. So let's add some simple color to this. Uh, in line with the rest of the uh, assets that I'm creating for the Unreal Engine tutorial that's coming up. So what I'm going to do is into the Hypershade first of all. I'm going to bring that over here. We are going to create a new Lambert. I'm just going to call it Colors. Uh, underscore, oh hang on, that's not very good. Material underscore Colors. And yes, I am doing the British spelling of Colors. Okay, we're going to link up a file. And that file is going to be this color palette I've created here. And that's just a, like a checkerboard of colors. You'll see it in the UV editor in a minute. And I'm going to apply that material to everything. So apply material to selection. And I'm done with the hypershade for now. So if you can't see your material, just press 6 and that will show up. See, at the moment, that just looks a, a bloody mess, doesn't it? But that's fine for now. So, so this doesn't get distracted. I'm just going to press 5 to turn that, that texture off for a sec. And then we're going to face mode. And I'm going to select all the faces on this part that I want to be brown. So that's going to be these here. I'll get the one underneath as well. That one, that one, that one. And that one, that one, and that one. I think that's all of them. Yep, that looks good. And I've selected them in that order on purpose because these are easier to select than the bands. That'll take me slightly longer. So if I do these first, that will only leave the bands and that makes them really easy to select in a second. You'll see what I mean. So let's go into my UV editing workspace. Ta-da! You can see how that's working. Here are all the colors that I can choose from. I'm going to go for this nice, rich, dark brown, I think. So in here, I'm in the create section. I'm just going to do an automatic map, which is all I need for this. I'm going to shrink those shells down and just plop them into the brown color. So now if I press six over here, you can see that they've all nice gone that, that nice deep brown. Beautiful. And what that does is means that everything that is left, so we're going to UV shell mode which is there, and I think there's something there as well, and something there. So all the shells that are left must be the bands. So what we'll do is select them in shell mode, then we'll do an automatic mapping, scale them down so they'll fit in one of my uh, colors, and I'm gonna put it on this sort of 
mid gray that I've got there. Just make sure that fits. Okay, let's go into object mode. I can see that I've not been entirely successful with that. So let's try again. So we're going to go into over here. We'll go into shell mode. And then I can see that I've missed a shell there. I'll select that. I've missed a shell there. I've missed a shell there. This is not very good. Uh, one there, one there. This is poor form. Let's just make sure I've got all of that selected. And then we will do another automatic. Okay, that looks like I'm going to be a bit more successful. So let's get that into that dark grey or mid grey again. And then we'll have a look. Did I get everything that I wanted this time? Yeah. Okay. So far, so good. The last thing I need to do is just sort the lock out, which again is pretty easy. So I'm just going to grab the whole thing. I'll do an automatic map. I'm going to shrink it down. And the color I want on this one is going to be the darker gray. Let's scale that up a bit. And then inside the lock, I want to be black. So I'm going to select one. Let's try again. One, two, three, those four faces. And then I'm going to do a greater than selection. I'm going to grow my selection by pressing shift and full stop. And I'll just try and zoom in so you can see this happen. So when I press shift and full stop, it selects all the faces around the ones I had selected, which again is just a faster way of selecting things. And then I'll do an automatic projection on that. And then those faces are going to sit in the black quadrant. There we go. Object mode. So that is pretty much complete. That's ready now to be put into a game engine such as Unreal Engine 4. So I'll just do a couple of final preparatory stages and that'll be ready to export. So I'm just going to go back into my classic view. I'm going to turn my grid back on because I want to make sure this is positioned where I want it to be. So what I'll do is I'm just going to combine both meshes for now. So we'll do a mesh combine. Okay. And I want the pivot to be at the bottom of this shape. Since if we put it into a game engine, that's what we'll be lining up with the floor. So we want our pivot. That'll be the thing that will line up. So I'm going to hold D and V and snap it to any bottom vertex. There we go. Now, sometimes, depending on the object, I'll snap the vertex to a bottom corner. If it was like a wall that was going to snap to other walls, that's definitely what I'd do. But in this case, I don't need to do that, so I'll leave it where it is. But one thing you must do, if you're exporting to Unreal Engine 4, is make sure that your pivot point is centered on the grid. And at the moment, mine's below the grid. You can see that there. So what I'll do is hold X on my keyboard, and I'll move it up and just make sure that that's now sitting on the bottom of the grid, which it is. Okay, so there we go. That's pretty much done. Just a couple more steps now to make sure it's ready. We need to freeze transformations. At the moment, this thinks that it's been translated 50 on Y. We need to get rid of that. So you can either go to modify freeze transformations or in my uh, 2018, they've started putting this handy little icon on your shelf. So we'll freeze transformations. You can see that zeroes everything out. We also need to get rid of all this history. When you go into a game engine, history can cause you a big headache. So to do that, you can go to edit, delete by type, history. Or again, you can just click on the icon here. So there's delete history. All the history goes. And that's pretty much now ready to go. You could also do this one, center pivot, but the pivot's where I want it to be. So I won't be doing that. And that's now ready to export. Brilliant. Thanks for coming to class. Hit that subscribe button to become a part of Game Dev Academy and ring that bell to make sure you're not late for future classes. Okay, class dismissed. Now go and make something awesome. I believe that quality education should be available to everybody and for that reason all of the classes at Game Dev Academy are completely free and were supported by our very generous school governors over at Patreon. If you'd like to become a Game Dev Academy Governor and support our work as well as helping us to steer the channel in the right direction, then use the link in the description to be taken to the Patreon page.